he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it man. Brick to the head, boys. It's been ages since I've watched some NWA TNA, and making that D'Lo Brown video made me realise what I've been missing from my life lately. And because it's been so long, I'm just going to catch you up on where we're currently at. Well, the last two episodes were really only about one thing, Raven's quest to become the NWA Heavyweight Champion, and he failed. So now we've got that out of the way, let's get on with the show. We start off with Tanae and West in the ring looking smug. They announced that a revolutionary match will be happening called Anarchy in the Asylum. It's going to be a Royal Rumble, no DQ, over the top rope, falls count anywhere, battle royal. Got it? Good. Winner becomes the number one contender. Not sure how that's revolutionary. All the other matches tonight will just be qualifying matches for this big match. It's going to be a tag team opener with Skipper and Loki versus AJ Styles who's pulling derpy faces at the camera. And he teams up with D'Lo Brown. I recently watched this match from my D'Lo Brown video. And let the Hawk tell you, it's good, but it's not as good as the following one. Loki starts out with D'Lo, he looks tiny next to him. D'Lo scores the first knockdown of our video with a clothesline. AJ makes a blind tag to D'Lo's back and he hits a springboard dropkick. Styles is in control for a while until the Warrior hits a rolling kick and he brings Skipper in. The match turns again because AJ is able to snap off a hurricanrana from the floor and he also hits some sort of wacky net breaker. AJ makes the tag to D'Lo and they demonstrate some of their good teamwork ending with AJ being dropped on Skipper. D'Lo is distracted by the fans chanting his name and Loki is able to come in. Then there's a ref bump and Loki nails a springboard dropkick. This causes D'Lo to get isolated for a bit until D'Lo hits a flapjack. He makes the tag and AJ is a hawk on fire, kicking anything that moves. We get a bit of a break as everyone fights around the ring. AJ wants to do a springboard but the triple X boys stop him and he gets a low key boot. Skipper tries to connect with the player of the day which AJ reverses into a powerbomb. D'Lo is back in the match now and he starts to use his power advantage. D'Lo hits a double shaky head leg drop, not seen that before. Skipper's taken out of the ring by D'Lo. Meanwhile, Loki is looking to put Stars away, but his cartwheel gymnastics aren't good enough as D'Lo runs back into the ring and he hits the sky-high netbreaker combination with AJ for the free count. In the back, Goldilocks is with gifted Glenn Gilberti. How is he gifted? She tells him that he's in the main event and it's the biggest match of his career. He tells the rest of the sports entertainment team that tonight it's all about disco because he needs to bring the title back to their locker room. He tells Mike Sanders how proud of him he is and Beyond Boring looks really happy with that compliment. Disco says it's time to beat some people up and the Glenn Gilberti show starts now. The camera cuts back to the TNA locker room where Glenn Gilberti smashes a door down and a wild slap nuts appears on crutches. Come on, Jay. Jeff Jarrett. Disco beats Jarrett up in the hallway with the crutches. The fight spills out into the car park. You know, TNA really loved filming out there at this point. It was like when you unlocked a new arena in a video game. Some random jobbers watch on as Disco starts using a chair. Some security geeks pull Disco away eventually. The next match will be a freeway match, but first, New Jack has a microphone. He screams, cut that shit music off. New Jack wants to talk about the recently debuted Sabu who's going against his ECW crew. He talks about the good old days when they were on pills getting checks bounced on them by Paul Heyman. And we was running around the hotel with a bunch of little butt naked midgets and we was getting drunk and we was on pills. He uses a bunch of homophobic slurs to describe Sabu. Not sure why AJ of a chainsaw is censored out, but this promo isn't. I saw your body parts off. How about that? Get out the ring. F Whoa. You were there with us when we had to go down with the ship, and them faggots abandoned me, you, Sandman, and the rest of the crew, and you little faggot. Now you gonna turn your back on us? This promo is great, and Jack ends it by saying he's gonna treat Sabu like a sheep in Tennessee and put it in him. I might be wrong with that one, someone will correct me. You send Sabu's ass out here, let him be the sheep. And you know what we do if you're from Tennessee, what the most of them do is sheep, they put it in But why can't we have more promos like this anymore, just crazy stuff? The Sandman will be one of his opponents, he's the biggest jobber in TNA who hasn't won a match on his own. Their other opponent will be Sabu who New Jack wants to shave and use his wool for a new jacket. Jack and Sabu are wrestling while Sandman is still hanging out in the crowd. Jack has already been busted open with a spike. Sandman finally enters the ring but he misses his kendo stick shot and he gets trash canned. We cut away from the match to see that gifted Glen Gilberti is still beating up slap nuts in the car park. Back at the ring Sabu puts the Sandman in the tree of woe and he throws a trash can in his face. New Jack finally manages to land some offence with a staple gun. It doesn't last long and despite this essentially being a handicap match Sabu beats them both up. He tries one of his famous Sabu dives off his chair but Sandman cuts him off with a kendo stick shot. We are now informed that Jarrett has been taken to a local hospital. The comrade team are now ranting that we need an authority figure. 
This storyline has been going on for a couple of months, but I thought it was meant to be Dusty Rhodes. All three have battled into the back of the arena. They put Sabu on a table. New Jack now goes up into the air on a scissor lift. Sandman is up on the balcony with him and he says to go even higher. Jack then dives off the lift but he misses Sabu and he goes through the table. Sabu quickly makes the pin for the three. The camera shot sucked, it made it look like such a short fall for Jack. But let me tell you, New Jack doesn't take short falls. In the back, Goldilocks is with Tracy Brooks and Bill Behrens. Tracy is demanding to be in the main event and says it's time the women in TNA had something to do. Goldilocks agrees that it's boring. Tracy then offers to perform sexual favours on Bill if he puts her in the main event tonight, and he seems happy with this deal. Wouldn't this make him an authority figure if he's out in making matches? Goldilocks is really busy tonight, she's now of America's Most Wanted. They're being forced to fight each other tonight for a spot in the main event. Storm is still doubting whose side Chris Harris is on. Harris says tonight it's all business. They shake hands. This was the least entertaining AMW promo of all time. That match will be now. Chris Harris will face his partner James Storm. They're repeating the match that was apparently so good that got them both hired in the first place. They're certainly even in the early goings, but bodies are flying everywhere as they both try and drop kick at the same time. Storm sends Harris out the ring but he doesn't dive on him. He lets him back in. The match starts to get a bit more heated now. Harris blocks a Storm kick but he's smashed with the free leg. Harris responds with a top rope superplex. Chris Harris follows that with a top rope elbow drop for a two count. He can't hit the catatonic but Storm can't hit the eight second ride either. He does then manage to connect with the last call but this wasn't his finisher at the time and it's just a two. Storm wants to hit the swinging noose from the corner which Harris reverses into a diamond cutter. He also hits a DDT. Chris Harris tries another diving elbow but he misses this one. This enables Storm to hit the 8 second ride but that's just a 2. This match is getting good. Harris then catapults Storm into the corner who puts the brakes on. He tries a dive but Harris spears him. That's just a 2, I thought it was over. Chris Harris tries a sunset flip now but Storm simply sits on him and that's the 3. I'm shocked that James Storm actually beat Harris. Harris is a bad loser and refuses to shake hands. Then he changes his mind and comes back to the ring. He aggressively pulls Storm into a handshake. In the back, Goldilocks is with Eric Watts, who's fake crying. He is apparently distraught that Jeff Jarrett is in hospital. His phone starts ringing and it's somebody telling him that Eric Bischoff is interested in coming to TNA as the director of authority. He grabs Goldilocks' hand for a moment of silence for slap nuts, but then he gets turned on by Goldilocks' hand. What a nutcase. Why is this guy even in TNA? Has he even had a match yet? The next match is because of the ladies' argument from earlier in the show. It's a three-way match with the winner entering the main event. It's Tracy Brooks taking on Desire with Sonny Don't Look At My Ass Siaki and the master of the cab driver slam, David Young. Also in this match is Trinity. Kid Cash is still obsessed with Trinity. He says he suspended her last week and she shouldn't even be here. The crowd chant, you suck at Cash. He responds to the crowd saying, you think I suck, you should see Trinity go at it. Cash gives her two choices. He can either cuff her up and drag her to the back like a bitch, or she can get down on her knees and apologise to him. Trinity chooses to fight him. It doesn't last long and Cash handcuffs them together. He drags her to the back like a bitch. So now I guess this will just be a singles match. Siaki decides to join the Comrade team laughing at Trinity. He asks the Comrade team how they're doing. It's so casual that they both seem to be taken by surprise. The singles match starts. And let me tell you, it's very appropriate that Siaki is here because this match sucks his ass. Desire kicks Trinity out of the ring and she completely fucks up a drop kick through the ropes. Desire tries to redeem herself with a dive off the ring steps. They come back to the ring where Tracy scores some knockdowns. Tracy Brooks hits a dive from the top, but don't look at my ass gets on the ring apron to distract the ref. The master of the cab driver slam tries to assist Desire, but he punches her by mistake and that's the free. Why do they even want Tracy in the main event? Wouldn't Trinity have made much more sense? David Young carries away the only woman he's ever loved. Siaki just doesn't care. Goldilocks is in the back with Amazing Red and Jerry Lynn, the tag team champions. They're apparently in a student-teacher relationship. Jerry says that after they've defended their tag titles tonight, he'll be challenging for Red's X Division title. Up next is a handicap match for the tag titles. This was decided on the last episode due to the brand new Jerry Lynn, who's basically the same as the old Jerry Lynn, but he's a bit more of a dick. They won the ability to choose who they'd be facing tonight, and for some bizarre reason, they've chosen Daniels. Wouldn't it be much more sensible to choose Loki or Skipper who've already had a match tonight so they'd be tired? So we've got Hill Daniels in a handicap situation. The new Jerry Lynn starts the match showing that he's more aggressive nowadays. Red and Lynn pinball Daniels back and forth and Lynn gets a two on a backdrop. A new move for Jerry Lynn now as he hits a headbutt to the nutsack from the corner, shades of puppet the midget killer. Red now has the tag and he hits an electric chair drop spin kick combination with Lynn. The rest of the Triple X team come to the ringside as Daniels is having his ass handed to him. He uses a steel chair on Red with the rest distracted. Daniels immediately gives him a flapjack into a single leg Boston Crab. Lynn breaks up the submission. Daniels continues to work on the leg with a dragon screw. Despite that, Daniels is unable to connect with the BME. Red gives Daniels the code red and tags Jerry Lynn. 
Lin counters a spine buster into DDT for a two count. He quickly follows up the TKO, but the triple X boys stop the count. He looks to the cradle power driver now, but then there's a ref bump. Red dives off the top with a DDT and he climbs to the top ropes again. Loki takes him out. Skipper is now in the ring of a chair, but Lin fights him off. Daniel shuts Lin down again. Now Lin snaps and he starts smacking all the triple X members of a chair. The referee wakes up to see Lin using the chair and he disqualifies Lin and Red. And the tag team titles change hands for the first time in TNA on a technicality. A rule that was put into place eight months before and everybody forgot existed. Jerry Lynn and Amazing Red were very bad tag team champions, but there's worse to come. From the sounds of it, just the main event left. The deranged Brian Lawler is entrant number one and number two is Dilo Brown. He looks like he's just walking in off the street. So we've got 15 men and one woman in this match with a new entrant every 90 seconds. Dilo is doing well until his 10 punches in the corner are countered into a powerbomb. Lawler takes too long with a hip hop drop and he doesn't connect. Sonny, don't look at my ass, Siaki is the next man out. Siaki and Lawler will work together here, but Dilo takes him down for double clothesline. We're only three minutes into the match, but Dilo has already been smacked in the zone twice. James Storm out next. The master of the cab driver slam appears on the ring apron, and there it is, the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam on Storm. Chris Harris also interferes in the match and tries to save Storm, but he knocks his own partner and Storm has now been eliminated. These two need to figure out if they're friends or enemies. Kid Cash is the next man out. He also wants to beat up Dilo and he hits a head scissors. So now we have a three on one as Dilo is smacked in the zone for a third time tonight. Kid Cash gives Dilo a crossbody. All three guys try to pin him at once, but he kicks out. Everyone decides to start fighting each other. Up next, randomly entering the match is Rick Steiner. He hasn't been in TNA since the very first episode. He cripples Kid Cash with a suplex. He gives Siaki a cab driver slam and then he eliminates Siaki from the match. He also has a chance to eliminate Lawler, but for some reason he pulls him back into the ring. Out next, it's the man who looks like Bret Hart ate Braden Walker with a table. At least he was well-mannered enough to sit at the table when he eats. Guys are breaking up pins, no idea why. I don't think anybody knows the rules of this one, and neither do I. Steiner gives awesome a German suplex. Former Road Rash character Just Incredible is out now. The crowd are loving Rick Steiner. Credible and awesome are fighting on the outside. Killings is out now. Nobody's fallen faster in TNA history. He gives Dilo a scissors kick before Steiner boots him over. Steiner and Dilo seem to have some sort of alliance going in this one. Dilo gets smacked in the zone for the fourth time. Killings gets suplexed by Steiner. He's dominating this one. Credible does a back body drop on the outside to Awesome, but he doesn't get the free. Tracy Brooks enters now, but she immediately is attacked by cage dancer Lollipop. For some reason, Kid Cash breaks it up and he throws Tracy into the ring. Steiner looks really confused and he doesn't want to hit Tracy. He doesn't like women beaters and he buckle bombs Kid Cash. Everyone looks so confused. Cash then gets straight back up and he hits the money maker for the free. Will somebody please tell me what the point was in entering her into this match as she did nothing? Saturn's music now hits, but a mass luchador appears and he throws out and eliminates Kid Cash. Out to the ring next, it's the gifted Glenn Gilberti. How's he gifted? Disco goes straight for Steiner for some reason. How funny would it be if he just threw him straight out? The Nazi twins stand up for their leader and they eliminate Steiner and the truth. Disco and the Nazi brothers control in the ring, but Conad enters the ring and takes the twins out of rolling clotheslines. They all fight out into the crowd, but Conad and Disco are still in this thing. The twins try to chokeslam Conad through a table, but it doesn't work. They do it again and it breaks. Disco makes the pin and Conad's out. <laughs> Yay, Buff Bagwell is back in TNA. We haven't seen him since he lost to the Rainbow Express. Finish him! Finish him! Finish him! he thinking? Hey. Who's he talking to? Who is he talking to? Yes, he's talking to himself. I just want to know if you want a microphone, if you want to say anything over the microphone. I've got a broken neck that I came back from that nobody give a shit about. I'm a six-time world tag team champion, and I just got beat by two gay guys. I'm Marcus, and my ass is going home. Bagwell eliminates Brian Lawler from the match. Bagwell is then eliminated by Gilberti. How times change. Awesome hits a big top rope splash on Credible for a two. AJ Styles joins the match, but more interestingly, beyond boring interferes, he kicks Awesome out the ring and for a table. Dilo Brown's been in this one since the start. He hits a big side slam on Credible. He retaliates with a super kick on Dilo. The very last person to enter is Sabu. He throws Credible out straight away. AJ and Dilo want to work together, but unfortunately AJ drop kicks his own partner and Dilo has been eliminated. Sabu takes Saturn out with a springboard DDT. 
Then he fucks up. He takes Saturn out to the ring with a head scissors, but he also takes himself out. This wasn't actually meant to happen, and the commentary team say that Sabu is not actually eliminated, as it was his own momentum that eliminated himself. That literally makes no sense, but whatever. Sabu is still in this, and we're down to the final three. All three men go through the middle rope. Sabu starts to use a chair in the crowd on Styles, whilst a man who looks like a young Garrett Bischoff watches on. Sabu tries a chair dive to the outside, but it doesn't work, and he tries again, and misses, and crashes to the floor. AJ is completely battering Disco in the ring now. He's busted open big time. Styles also almost rolls him up, but the ref takes way too long to count. It's just a two. AJ can't hit the Styles clash because Glenn Gilberti throws him overhead and out of the ring. AJ Styles has been cleanly eliminated by Glenn Gilberti. Sabu is back now using a fork on Disco. He also tries a chair dive, but this causes a ref bump. Sabu hits him in the face of a chair and hits a springboard moonsault. Raven interferes in the match with a chair shot on Sabu and the Raven effect. And there it is. Gifted, Glenn, Gilberti is the winner and the new number one contender because somebody fucking hates me. Team SEX come back to the ring to celebrate and they hold Disco up in the air. The show quickly ends. Not a good episode aside from the New Jack promo. There's literally nothing you'd want to see here. The next few episodes are likely to be unbearable as the Disco Inferno is shoved further and further down our throats and they try and build him up as a main eventer. Let's check it out. Not had your fill of main eventer gifted Glenn Gilberti yet? Well, don't worry, he opens this show. He's even made an effort to try and dress smart, and he's given a hero's welcome from the SEX boys and girls. The crowd chant, Disco sucks. He admits he doesn't expect people to like him because he's never had a connection with the fans in the South. He brags about becoming the number one contender and also beating up slap nuts. He moves on to talking about his suit, which cost him almost $2,500. He moves on to complain about SEX being forced to live in their grimy little locker room. He vows to take over the building tonight and give them a better locker room. He also has a list of targets tonight that he calls Gilberti's list. Eat your heart out, Jericho. He wants to find out where Raven's loyalties lie. He also says anyone who wants to join the group has 10 seconds to make their mind up now. The ECW guys make their way out to the ring. Disco is stupid enough to think they're here to join him. New Jack tells him to shut up and calls him Glen Gill Shitty. He makes fun of his cheap suit and his big nose. He calls SEX shit eaters. Anytime New Jack is on the mic, I enjoy it. Disco tells them that the drugs can't have kicked in yet for the night. For some reason, Disco wants to sit down and talk to the Sandman. Was he really the most logical choice to have a sensible conversation with? I would have chosen Credible as the most normal one out there, even if he is a rejected Road Rash character. Anyway, it doesn't work and they all fight. The Extreme Revolution hold the ring, a fun opening segment. In the back, Goldilocks is here with the kid from the Midwest, Chris Saban, with his first ever TNA promo. It's not good. He's challenging for the X Division title tonight. Jerry Lynn interrupts him pretty quickly and says he doesn't deserve to be the number one contender because all he did was beat up a bunch of nobodies. Lynn says he spoke to the management and he's been added to the match tonight and it'll be a freeway. Saban tells him he doesn't think it's a good idea. So I guess Lynn's a heel now? That match is now. They're calling him Chris the Future Saban. This was a nickname that didn't stick and it would soon be given to Frankie Kazarian. The new Jerry Lynn will also challenge. The champion Amazing Red has new music and it's one of the worst things I've ever heard. It sounds like a hippo smashing into a building while someone screams. Lynn tries to boss Red around and he tells him that he'll deal with Saban on his own. Chris Saban fights them both off and they all start fighting. They all try drop kicks and the crowd cheer. Red and Lynn work together with a drop toe hold drop kick combination. This working together doesn't last and Red takes Lynn out of a hurricanrana. He also does a pointless flip in the corner. Lynn keeps trying to slam him but Red keeps landing on his feet. Jerry Lynn eventually nails a backbreaker before Saban breaks up the pin. Chris Saban also gives Lynn a backbreaker, but Red breaks the pin up. Red and Saban start moving at lightning speed, ending with a red DDT. Triple X appear at ringside. Hopefully they won't ruin this one. Lynn and Red work together again. Lynn puts Saban on his shoulders and Red hits a springboard hurricanrana. The match continues. Lynn hits Saban with a bridging German suplex for a two count. Saban responds with a set out powerbomb. Red has to break up the pin. Chris Saban is now able to fight off the code red, but he turns around into a nice amazing red kick. Double inverted DDT now and all three guys are down. Next up we get a leg scissors which doesn't lead to anything. Moments later red takes out Jerry Lynn with a DDT. He can't dive to the outside though because Saban hits a big boot. He immediately dives out of the ring hitting a diving forearm to Jerry Lynn. Now red is able to hit a huge flip dive. Everyone is down on the outside. They make their way back to the ring where Saban catches red in the mid air, but he can't connect with anything. Saban gets destroyed now with a guillotine leg drop and Red hits a swanton bomb whilst Lynn is on top of Saban. Dude, I was watching the NWA TNA show the other day, man. And this dude, Amazing Red, he stole my swanton bomb finishing maneuver, man. But he didn't finish. Man, I'm going back to Carolina. 
and I'm going to tell my stoner friend Shannon all about you, Red Man. Red hits a diving middle rope DDT, but the pin is broken up. Saban picks him up and hits a move they call the Future Shock, but the match continues. Jerry Lynn hits Saban with the Cradle Power Driver. Red breaks the pin up. All three guys look spent, but Red is able to springboard into the ring to hit a code red on Lynn. It's just a two. And now Triple X do get involved. Loki takes the referee and Skip hits the player of the day on Amazing Red. And that's the free for Chris Saban. He is the new X Division champion in about only his third TNA appearance. It's then revealed that Chris Saban has sold his soul to the devil and he's joined Sports Entertainment Extreme. Not a good two shows for Amazing Red who's lost both his titles and he got abused from Jeff Hardy. <laughs> in the back, New Jack is calling Sandman Fathead. He's accusing Sandman of meeting with Sports Entertainment Extreme behind their backs. Saturn interrupts them and said Sandman can meet with them tonight if he wants, but they won't have his back. Road Rasher says Terry's right. Goldilocks is choking on the cigarette smoke. Everyone's screaming and then Sandman smashes his own head open with a can and it ends. In the back, gifted Glenn Gilbert is congratulating Chris Saban. Now he hypes up Mike Sanders and says tonight he'll be a giant killer. He also tells the Nazi twins to find Sabu and bring him to the locker room in one piece. Desire interrupts and says there's someone else to see him. It's Kid Cash. He says he has no problem with SEX. He loves SEX. He says he doesn't want to be on Disco's list. He offers a peace offering. Disco thinks he's talking about weed for some reason and frantically says that they don't do that. But Cash offers him something else. He offers him the services of Trinity. Disco wants to know what she can do for them. Mike Sanders wants a rusty trombone, whatever the hell that is. It ends with Cash telling her to be on her P's and Q's while someone screams knees and Q's. A table match is next. It's beyond boring Mike Sanders who's taken on Mike Awesome with Father James Mitchell. They aren't hanging around in this one. It looks like it's only going one way as Awesome clothesline Sanders. He tries to powerbomb Sanders out of the ring, which Sanders fights off. Beyond Boring tries to head scissors him out of the ring, but they just sort of slop out the ring. Awesome beats him up on the guardrails now. He scoop slams Sanders on the floor outside. Like a complete idiot, Awesome fights him over to the Sports Entertainment Extreme locker room. He takes a year trying to fetch a table and Sanders avoids his table shot. Awesome now has a chair. This one's all awesome so far. Awesome smashes Sanders again with the chair and now he's on the table. Predictably, the Nazi twins appear and attack Awesome. The other members of the new church then fight into the car park with them. There's that new unlocked arena again. Triple X join in the attack. We cut back to the ring where Awesome still seems to be winning. He shoves a table in the ring, but when he climbs into the ring, Sanders pushes it into his face. Mike Sanders signals that he's going to dive on Awesome, but he's able to cut him off. Sanders is stuck on the top rope and Awesome climbs up. He wants to do an Awesome bomb, but Disco appears. He hits an awkward looking chair shot. Nothing happens, so he does it again and Awesome falls through the table. Mike Sanders has beaten Mike Awesome. In the back, it's Goldilocks with Chris Harris. He reveals that James Storm is ignoring his phone calls now. He blames the NWA for trying to split the team up. He says it wasn't his fault that Storm got eliminated in that last match. Tonight, he's challenging the mash with the cab driver slam David Jung to prove his loyalty to AMW. Good promo from Harris. I'm enjoying this episode of TNA. Well, it certainly isn't boring. Glenn Gilberti has taken a cameraman where Trinity is being harassed by sports entertainment. Sonny wants to stay, but Disco calls him a loser and tells him to leave the locker room. Eric Watts walks in. He's here to complain about Disco attacking Jeff last week. Disco says he knows they both hate Jeff Jarrett and he doesn't believe his game of pretending to be Jeff's friend. Eric Watts again says that Eric Bischoff is coming and he leaves. Disco sits down to talk to Trinity now. He says he knows that Kid Cash is an asshole and he offers her a place in the faction. The segment continues as Julio and Alexis are dragged into the locker room. We'll have to wait and find out what that's about because we've got another match now. Kid Cash has a microphone and he says he's had enough of Trinity and everybody in TNA. He randomly calls out The Truth and his taco eating buddy Conad. He will most likely be losing this match as he's gone from a star to a nobody. Truth dodges Cash in the corner and hits a drop kick. He follows up a set out arm drag. Conan on commentary says Cash needs to learn how to keep his bitch in check. It's revealed that this is happening because Cash thinks Conan is behind the mystery luchador. I'm shocked this one hasn't been resolved yet, it's been going on for months. On the outside of the ring, Cash tries to dive but he's caught and power slammed by Truth. We get a cool trade off now as Cash tries to use a chair, but eventually Truth eats the chair after some dodges. Cash comes back to the ring with a diving clothesline for a two count. Conad is on commentary running down main event again Gilberti. He says he was a joke in WCW who hung around with the filthy animals and a duck. Yup, pretty much Conad, that's the problem with suddenly having to buy Disco as a main eventer. He was a joke and then he turns up in TNA and he's suddenly a faction leader and a main eventer? I don't think so. Truth manages to fight back of a throat thrust and a scissors kick. The most insane moment ever is up next. Cash goes for a diving Huracarana. Truth catches him but stumbles and they almost fall out the ring. NWA Impact brings you the smack of the week. Sponsored by all new Blonde for Men. If you're a brown-haired potter, put some blonde in it.
it makes you look hotter. Oh man, this kid Cash, this guy's like a human highlight reel. You never know what he's gonna do next. He jumps, he double springs from the ropes. Oh, it's like a human Ferris wheel out there, man. It's like a trip to Disneyland every time you see Kit Cash. And he always leaves your girl with a rash. That was the NWA TNA Smack of the Week, sponsored by Blonde Just For Men. Get it? Got it? Shove it. Kid Cash then starts arguing with the ref now, who shoves him over. Nothing happens and Cash stays in control. He then makes a mistake a moment later and Truth drops him on his face. Ah, Cash does a drop toe hold and Truth grazes the ropes of his face. Lots of almost bad botches in this match. The Nazi twins appear attacking Conan on commentary. The Truth doesn't notice that's happening and he hits the splits into the kicks. Ron the Truth gets Cash on the top rope and he hits the Super Scott Hall special, the sack of shit. Somehow this match still continues. Truth climbs to the top. Now he's noticed. He hits a big dive to the Nazis on the outside. Everybody's distracted when the mystery luchador appears in the ring. Inverted DDT on Cash and Truth makes the pin for the free. A fun match. The fun continues now because the Sandman is in the car part of a stick. He wants to sit down with Glen Gilberti. Instead he finds Don't Look at My Ass Siaki. He asks him, who the hell are you? Sandman says he only wants to speak to Glenn. Siaki tries to bribe him with a crate of beer. Desire gives him a can and sits on his lap and plays with his pole. Sandman says he wants to show her an even bigger stick than his cane. David Jung takes offence to this and tries to hit Sandman with a stick, but he dodges and he hits Desire by mistake. Siaki and Sandman brawl out to the ring now. They're up in the Steve Borden zone. Now they head to the ring. Sandman hits the Russian leg sweep the cane on Siaki. Bert Prentice half-heartedly tries to stop him. The rest of SEX is here now and the Nazis hit the H-bomb. The other ECW guys also appear and it's total mayhem. Perry Saturn is the karma head once again. He says that this needs to stop now and he'll fight Glenn Gilberti on his own tonight. Disco agrees but says he needs to go and get changed first. This calms everyone down and the brawl ends. Things slow down now because Slapnuts is here to talk about a variety of subjects. The main takeaway here is that Jarrett has strained knee ligaments. Unfortunately, he won't be stripped of his world title like any normal injured wrestler would be. Slapnuts lives by his own rules. He compares Disco to Stone Cold and The Undertaker because they went through character changes before becoming stars. What the fuck was he smoking before this interview? Stone Cold Steve Austin went from Stunning Steve to Stone Cold. Mark Calloway went from Mean Mark Callis in WCW to The Undertaker in WWF. Who knows where Glenn's new character is going to lead him. In the back, Kid Cash is flipping out throwing furniture around. Tracy Brooks marches in. She says he dropped her on her head and she liked it because she likes it rough. She offers him a massage and she busts out some cream and puts her hand in his pants. I'm not sure what this cream was, but it burns his dick and then she beats him up. This might be the funniest TNA episode of all time. The master of the cab driver slam David Young is out now and he'll face Chris Harris. Young looks miserable. Harris shows good fire. He completely batters the cabbie. A nice series of moves now and Harris sends Young out the ring. Nothing really happens and they come back to the ring with Harris hitting a diving crossbody. Harris is completely dominating. He hits a delayed vertical suplex. Don't look at my ass appears at ringside distracting Harris, but not enough for Young to actually take advantage. Siaki decides to pull the ropes down and Harris goes out of the ring. Young distracts the ref while Siaki beats him up. That allows Young to hit a springboard moonsault on the ramp. It's all David Young now. Chris Harris eventually manages a diving clothesline. He also hits a DDT, but Siaki is still getting involved. Harris plants Young again with a full Nelson slam for a two count. Now David Young hits a three quarter net breaker. I find myself becoming more and more impressed with the cabbie. Then there's almost a ref bump and when Young turns around he gets a spear. The ref is distracted and Siaki gets in the ring and hits the Siakalypse. Young is slow to make the cover and it's just a two count. Siaki climbs in the ring of a chair and shoves it between the turnbuckles. Storm rushes out and he kicks Siaki out of the ring and he batters him away. Stupidly Storm fights towards the SEX locker room and to the surprise of absolutely nobody, the door opens and they all come out and beat Storm up. When will these NWA guys learn not to go over there? The referee has ADD and he's distracted again, so Young throws Harris into a chair. That's just a two. Young tries a second rope moonsault but he misses it, and there it is, the catatonic for the three. No cab driver slam for Young tonight, which is disappointing. Harris realises his partner is missing. He finds him as a bloody beaten mess coughing up blood by the SEX door. Despite being right next to the door, he does nothing to retaliate. Disco addresses Julio and Mickey now. He tells them that Raven doesn't care about them and he wants them to join SEX. He tells them to watch his back tonight. And all three are out to the ring now. He'll be facing Perry Saturn who comes out to the ring on his own like a complete moron. Saturn beats the shit out of him for a while and hits a double arm overhead suplex. The ref has to drag Saturn off which gives Disco an opening. His offence doesn't affect Saturn for long and Saturn flattens him. Perry drops him across the ropes, nutsack first, and he tries a springboard and they both sort of slop together. Think it was supposed to be a dropkick. 
Mickey attacks Saturn, so he throws her into the guardrail. Julio beats Saturn up, and the referee sends them both away. Back in the ring, Disco starts hitting low drop kicks. He's zoned in on Perry Saturn's knee. Disco's very happy of his work. He hits the Russian leg sweep, but he misses his second rope dive. Saturn throws in with two Germans, and then he decides he doesn't want to hang around to this match, and there's a sit out suplex. Gilberti looks for a stunner, but Saturn shoves him off for a ref bump. The Gathering return, but Saturn fights them off with ease, hitting more suplexes. He picks Mickey up and simply smashes her to the mat. Disco uses the distraction to hit a diamond cutter, which is just a two count. Saturn gets up and gets a two on a backslide. Disco then hits a stunner for the three. Well, it took a lot of interference, which is about the only way I could buy this match happening. Not an amazing match at all. In the back, Goldie with the super team D'Lo Brown and AJ Styles. D'Lo warns the SEX team to leave them alone tonight. He says the TNA Asylum is his home. He asks AJ what he thinks. AJ says he didn't turn down a WWE contract for nothing. He says he doesn't like SEX because they're a bunch of boring nobodies. AJ seems to have a short memory because he previously tried to join that group when Russo was in charge, just the main event to go. Triple X will be defending their tag team titles against Styles and D'Lo Brown who are undefeated as a team. Triple X will be represented by Daniels and Skipper tonight. They both get back body drop straight away. D'Lo and AJ with some nice teamwork now have a side slam leg drop combination on Skipper. It doesn't go better for Daniels and he gets a D'Lo kick. Double hip toss from the super team now and D'Lo drops Styles on Daniels for another two. Skipper's about to interfere, but Stars quickly baseball slides him. Daniels takes advantage of that distraction. Loki also gets involved. Back in the ring, Daniels with a nice back heel trip on Stars. AJ is dropped on the ropes and Skipper does a rope walk hurricanrana. He isn't hanging around and gets a two on a corkscrew splash. Elix and Daniels show their own double team moves off now. After Stars is cut off for a long time, he's able to hit a power bomb and he brings D'Lo in. He hits a big side slam on Daniels, but Skipper breaks up the pin. D'Lo isn't done, he hits a suplex into a cutter. The super team want the sky high net breaker combination now, but Styles is taken out for the outside. Delo's hit with an STO. Loki continues cheating on the outside of the ring. Daniels has the Koji clutch on, and Styles eventually makes it back to the ring to break the submission up. Christopher Daniels is unsuccessful with the Angels' wings, and Delo brings AJ in. He kicks the heads off all his opponents, and the Pele kick sends Daniels out of the ring. Loki picks him up, but AJ quickly dives on them. Skipper also ends up on the outside of the ring, and Delo hits a top rope crossbody on Skipper. That looked like a heavy dive to catch. Back in the ring, Daniels and AJ are reversing each other like maniacs, ending with the inverted DDT. Unfortunately, Disco Inferno is here again, and he hits a bad looking stunner to Styles. Daniels rolls AJ up for the free, ending an excellent match. Look, I think it was a massive misstep from TNA not making Dilo and AJ the tag team champions, but you can't exactly have the tag team titles change on a weekly basis. Disco then says it's time to take over the TNA Asylum. Disco has a cigar. The whole team fight into the back. Oh look, the albino Harry Potter is still employed by TNA for some reason. The Nazis want to throw Lin into a cage, but instead he throws him into Sanders. What an idiot. It's pure chaos here as the show goes off the air. Gilberti sits back to admire the chaos. He's cold, he's calculated, and he's the number one contender. I honestly thought I'd end up hating this episode built all around the rise of Glenn Gilberti, but this was honestly a great episode. We had excellent wrestling, comedy, hardcore, and funny promos. Honestly, the Slapnuts promo was by far the least entertaining part of the show. It feels like a real war now, and the threat from the SEX faction is now real. And if you don't agree with that, I'll rip your arm off and make you squeal. 